all starts summer 1914. Germany has a huge standing army, the French have a huge army, but the British have a relatively small army. We're reliant on the navy, we think it's all going to be solved on the high seas and we've got an empire to look after as well. So part of our army are the territorial or reservists and these are the guys who meet on evenings, weekends, go to summer camp and they rapidly become the mainstay of the British army. Hi John, thanks for inviting us over this afternoon. Uh, perhaps you'd like to explain where we are, what's this building, what's this room? Certainly Roy, uh, we're in RADA Studios, which is now part of RADA, the drama school. Uh, it was taken over by them in 2012 and had been run previously as an arts centre called the Drill Hall uh, for the previous 30 years uh, by a charity called Central London Arts Limited and um, was uh, built in 1882, early 83 as a drill hall for the Bloomsbury Rifles Ooh. Rangers and it now continues its legacy as an art centre. Drill halls. The London drill halls were distributed throughout the city and the suburbs. They were purpose-built for doing soldiering. They would have contained stores, offices, and a big open hall for carrying out the drill. The floors of the drill halls were specifically designed to absorb the noise of the marching boots so the neighbours wouldn't complain. Uh, this is the main theatre and um, according to our plan, um, this would have been the area that they did all their drill and that's the that's stage the area stage. just over there. I mean, it mentions a stage here. There would have been presentations by the volunteers and also um, it was a rehearsal venue. The Ballet Russe rehearsed here with Nijinsky. Wow. And as you go through um, history, um, Ralph Reader rehearsed the gang shows here and in the 60s it was taken over as an exhibition space. We can see yet again this is a multi-function, multi-use space which is amazing. Okay, the London Regiment had to grow at a huge rate to accommodate this need for troops for the front. So they were taking their troops from local geographical areas, local professions, special interest groups. Uh, we know about the Stepney and Poplar Rifles, the London Irish, the London Scottish, the Scotsmen who live in London, the Cyclist Battalion, the Post Office Rifles. All different groups are joining the army together. So if they're living together, working together, sharing a common interest, they're joining the army together. Uh, this is the beating heart of the building. Uh, this is where the colonel would have sat in very palatial surroundings and uh, telling off all the officers. And um, it's right above the front entrance, very imposing window just there. So um, even the neighbours outside would know mm. that this was the place mm. to be. We know about Kitchener's drive to increase the size of the army. There was a huge, in effect, marketing campaign to get people to join. And we have to think about why people might have joined the army. Yeah, they would have had their a sense of patriotism appealed to. Uh, they would have been told that the Hun would be on their doorstep. But there are other things that would have attracted people to the army. In London, perhaps you'd worked in a dull job and actually this would have been a great adventure. Or maybe this is a way of dragging yourself out of poverty. Uh, some people were encouraged to join the army by their employers and some people were shamed into joining the army. So we have many different things going on. Okay, John, well, what have you brought me into now? This is this, this is quite a small space under the main theatre. Could you tell me what this is? Indeed, this is the basement. Uh, it's now our archive uh, just behind us, uh, but it was previously the shooting gallery. Ah, right. So it's quite often the case that uh, the drill hall basement would be used as a, it's basically a firearms range, and it's not a place where you shoot at targets. This is where, where uh, new recruits would be given the opportunity to have their first go at firing a rifle. The rifle would have been suppressed. Obviously, it's quite a short space, and mm. it's not like an outdoor rifle range. So it's just a, an experience they would have to go through as part of their training. The London Regiment attracted people from geographical areas to come together as one, to volunteer as one. You could ask the question, in London, as large and a disparate a place as it is now, would people still volunteer in the same way and create those communal bonds?